नमस्ते टू ऑल वेलकम टू दिस डे सेशन माय सिंसियर प्रणाम्स टू सिंसियर थैंक्स टू पीएसएसएम एंड आर बिलाउड गुरुजी डॉक्टर प्रीतम हां ब्रह्मर्षि पत्री जी एंड स्पेशल वेलकम टू अनिल सर फॉर टुडे सेशन फॉर यू एंड देन टुडे फ्रेंड्स टुडे टुडे टॉपिक्स वी हैव पोस्टेड इन द व्हाट्सएप ग्रुप यस्टरडे सो वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस Daniel sir is going to share the share his wisdom about spiritual science and also his experiences in this spiritual journey he will share some of his experiences with us so it will be a wonderful program today so let's all welcome to anil sir today yeah thank you yes sir yes sir thank you master thank you yes, thank sir. you for the wonderful opportunity and uh, yes first of all yes. uh, it's a truly honor to be part of this 21 day mahavatar foundation program that you are all doing it's an excellent service to begin with and uh, thanks for having me on day 5 uh, today and uh, truly truly honored to be part of this uh, so as we get to start right i mean i think there are few things that i want to touch upon and then get into the spiritual science and then talk about my experience in meditation and how spiritual science has helped me to come over some of my material challenges as well as spiritual upliftment in general uh just a brief introduction as to you know what i am where i am coming from and uh, where, you know in my own journey where i am at uh i've learned this you know again you know uh, patri ji's uh, the the base concept of anapanasati this was in 1993 is when in the first pyramid in kanu i was a kid at the time and started to learn this uh, technique the beautiful technique of anabhanasati in 1993 around 92 93 time frame is when i started this uh, this meditation right uh, my aunt you know my dad's uh, younger sister was staying right in the same lane as to where the pyramid has been built today and it was an excellent opportunity you know uh, i don't know right it may be my previous births uh, uh you know karma that brought me there but uh, got an opportunity to to be in association with pssm at the time learned the technique did practice it but then also dissected it this is the beauty of uh, pssm right patri ji never ever hold us apart to say that you got to do this you got to be this right he will help you understand and un- unravel all the spiritual mysteries but then you have free to go and do what you need to do because this is such a gnana pradayini this is a truth so he knows that eventually wherever you wander off you will eventually come back here and that's exactly what happened to me i wandered off did out of living did some transcendental meditation did some you know deep idol meditations and all that i never left the meditation from that point but i was doing different types of meditations and eventually 12 years back is when i regained my consciousness i guess and then came back to again looking at one of the patri ji's youtube video uh, that's when i kind of recollected myself and then came back in a very short order that's my must my journey and then from then on i've been doing a, a very you know back end silent practice of my own trying to get to the concept of what patri ji talks about getting away from body conscious to soul consciousness uh in in that moment is when in 2017 18 time is when uh, i met patri ji again and then he said uh, basically you have done on your own enough now is the time for you to come back and start spreading the message uh, in and around the psm community and that's when i have taken an active role coming back and then and then started to spread the message and now i am part of the psm global with pari uh working hand in hand where we are actually doing the first dhyana mahachakram in usa uh and and truly you know honored to be part of that that uh, excellent you know program that patriji's vision of 2018 or 17 that is coming true now in october 7th and 8th we are actually doing it in dallas dallas area with that in i hail from uh, hyderabad on the southern side of it uh I lived through my time there and then about 20 20 25 years back is when i moved into us i've been living in eastern side of the us uh, more so recently with uh, virginia as my base home here and uh, again you know practicing the same anapanasati and, and the techniques that we are learning today now 
the the purpose let's come back to the purpose as to why we are here right so we want to understand what is spirituality what is the new age philosophy why spiritual science is more advanced than the spirituality itself why is that patriji talks about more on the spiritual science and why he doesn't preach or talk about religion or anything that's related to that right so first of all for us to really get to know what is spiritual science we have to understand what is the new age philosophy the concept of spiritualism right in the recent time has developed in a multifold way right every human being or every individual who has got his grass roots on the knowledge from a spirituality perspective have started to look around and start to have a meaning of its own right in that very concept of it the new age philosophy got developed what is the new age philosophy it's basically not necessarily looking for someone to help you to do things instead look within for any help that you are looking for it's about the old peace it's about the divinity of the human beings it's about the concepts that talks about all creation is one right there is nothing what is called god the god is present everywhere it's inside you it's outside you it's everywhere the entire cosmos the entire universe is only one 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 and only one god and that god is nothing but consciousness chaitanya and then the very god that you are looking out for is not other than you yourself right that's what it talks about and the depth there is no depth for consciousness the death is only for the body is one of the concept that talks about it and then the beautiful thing what patriji talks about at length is we create our own realities there is nobody else who is actually pushing the button for us there is nobody else who is asking you to go through this karma or that karma or there is nobody who is actually pushing you to come back to this earth for doing anything it is your soul that is actually looking to learn certain things get trained on certain things and then you design your own life and then you take the bath we create our own realities such a beautiful thing right this is the new age philosophy that talks about the very fact of what spirituality and the spiritual science is all about what do we believe right why do i look at when i look at this philosophy how is this different than the ancient times as to what hindus muslims or christianity or buddhism jainism what has preached right the gone are the days where you are actually getting out and then you know doing a you know solicited uh, penance of your own sitting in a forest sitting in a in a mountain you know and then secluding yourself from the society and trying to trying to kind of gain your consciousness right the time has come where we are in this uh, aquarius age right we call this aquarius age where the energies and the system is surrounded the world peace is surrounded in such a way that you get the opportunity to do everything right at your doorstep you are you can be where you are but yet be able to get and do everything what you want to achieve that is what we call you know buddha's uh, concept what patriji talks about is madhya marga middle path right with the middle path you don't have to live anywhere you live where you are you do what you do you live 50% of your life materially and you 50% of your life spiritually now how does this spiritual science help me to elevate or uplift myself from my day to day problems right why is that spiritual science is important what am i getting out of it right the fundamental question for all of us right in this society is how am i going to get through my problems everybody has problems right tell me you know one individual who doesn't have a problem right so we all go through the pains and the gains of each and every day that we live on and then learn through those concepts of what comes your way you are getting trained your soul is getting trained your body is getting hammered your mind is getting pushed left right and center but yet there is a learning that is happening which is at the soul level right to mitigate that to understand it there are some revolutionary changes that needs to come in the new age philosophy which talks about 
at abundantly on unconditional love for the entire creation. It's not just I'm loving my own family or my own human race, right? You need to love the plant kingdom. You need to love the animal kingdom. You need to love the rocks, you know, anything and everything that you're touching upon is consciousness. And the fact and the revolution that brings up in this new age philosophy is to embrace all of it together, you know, live and let live kind of a concept. The first and foremost thing that comes to front is unconditional love. This, you know, this is something that Patriji talks about quite a bit in, 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 uh, in the recent and, and in the past as well. Then comes unconditional acceptance to any faith, to any religion, to any events, to any happenings in this world, right? irrespective of where you are, how you are looking at it, how you are kind of, you know, thinking through it, what may come your way, good, bad, ugly, you know, accept it unconditionally because you design your own reality. We created our own reality. And yet we defy the very thing that we created when we come back to earth because we don't remember that. And then the third and the fourth, third, third, the most important one is unconditional forgiveness. It is a very, very important. Never ever judge, comment, interfere in others' lives. Right? And this is an important aspect that you learn when you start to understand the spiritual science, the very essence of what spiritual science talks about and why it is an important aspect in our journey. Now, we, we all know that, you know, there are like, you know, you know, Osho talks about this 112 different ways of doing meditation, right? There are different techniques that are available. There are different, you know, permutations, combinations you can do. There are Kriya Yogas, Karma Yogas, you know, Pranayama. I mean, you name it, you have so many different ways. But when you come to reality, when you come beyond your senses, beyond your body, beyond your mind, there are only few things that will filter out. What is that one technique that stands out that I start with and I end with? I don't do anything else. There are no steps. There are no you know, process that changes. There is absolutely no thinking. There is absolutely no doing. Everything needs to happen, irrespective of time, irrespective of where I am. Irrespective of what situation and position I am, I should be able to get to that state in a very fastest way. And if there is any technique that does it, it is the technique of Anapanasati, the breath meditation that we are doing. Right? Now, why, why is this breath meditation eventually will take you through the spiritual science? The first and foremost fact is when you are with your breath, your mind comes to your control. You are with your mind, right? Mind is with you. You will transcend beyond mind as you keep doing the meditation on a daily basis. Eventually, you get to a point where you go to the no thought state or zero state where there is absolutely no mind at all. At that state is when everything is happening. The entire universe circulates at that frequency, at that very thing. When you tap on to those energies, when you tap on and, and go beyond your state of mind, that's when the realization starts to kick in. That's when you understand the consciousness at a different level. We are actually moving from physical form of energy to the subtle form of energies. And all of these concepts are explained very well through the spiritual sciences. And that is the reason as you keep meditating, you will start to realize beyond the fact of your material life. And you ask such beautiful questions as to why am I here? What is my purpose? Why is world created this way? Why am I going through this pain? Right? What is coming my way? What is going this way? Why the day comes and day goes? You know, All these basic questions that we have in our mind and we don't yet know the answers or at least even try to get the answers, a lot of that will get relieved, relieved through this meditation practice. Right? So it is, it is absolutely essential as a concept 
to understand the spiritual science and for you to become or drive into that spiritual science you have to be in connection with meditation it is only through meditation you will understand this higher self knowledge or higher greater knowledge that talks about the big picture in general right now i i spoke briefly about new age philosophy right what is this all about right the aquarian philosophy or the, there are 12 ages that corresponds to 12 zodiac signs and right now we are in the aquarian age kumbha age every age is about 2160 years apart and and recently in 2000 time frame we came to the aquarian star with that lot of high energies lot of truth related energies the knowledge the self knowledge energies are actually circulating on mother earth so it is easier for us to get into the state of you know no being right or state of uh, no thought in a very very fastest way if we start to practice meditation right now with that what is going to come my way is all of these spiritual sciences now i wanted to touch briefly upon what are these principles that uh, patri ji talks about when you talk about spiritual science right why is that it's very really important that we understand what spiritual science is all about right in a very nutshell right let's kind of list out what are those six things and then we'll go and take one at a time and then and then we can go deeper right the first and foremost one is the principle or the theory of consciousness accepting that you are soul entity you are not the body you are not the mind the bmi has nothing to do with who you are and where you come from right that is the number one truth and that's that's understanding that and being in that state is is the one that talks about the the principle of consciousness then talks about the principles of incarnation reincarnation birth and rebirth that we we know about right we come to earth we leave the earth and we come we go we come we go we may probably have done like thousands or millions of time but yet we don't understand why we come and why we go understanding that very nature of it is is also part of the spiritual science and then the third most important one is the cause and effect the entire creation what we are seeing in this world is because of this law of karma we call that the principle of karma what does it mean for every action there is an equal and opposite reaction cause and effect for everything that is happening to me in this material world there is a definitive reason why it is happening it's just that i am i am short sighted i don't have time nor energy nor inclination to go take a deep dive to understand it and yet blame the society we call god you know blame it on god blame it on everybody else but i'm not the one to be blamed right we all do that all the time again that is that is a fundamental to the entire creation and we understand about the law of cause and effect principles of cause and effect or theory of cause and effect then goes into the little deeper state of law of progression irrespective of what my life is leading whether it is good whether it is bad whether it is ugly am i going through happiness i am going through pain whatever may be the state of my life there is always progression happening because your soul is always learning through it every opportunity that you are hitting everything that's coming your way there is always a learning because we come to earth to learn we are getting trained the mother earth is actually a platform where i am getting trained right so the law of progression happens it is because of the fact then comes the law of hastening the style of what we call yoga right why i need to understand yoga what does it mean to me right why do i need to care for it what happens if i don't do it right some of those aspects needs to be very well understood if you want to be part of if you want to be mastering the spiritual science and finally the last one is about understanding that earth is not the only world that's around here like there are the cosmos the galaxy you have many worlds many lives and everything has got its creation its ending but yet gets reincarnated you know 
it's like trying to understand and unfold the mystery that you are looking at from a window right but then universe is eternal right it's just it just you know you can you can you have like millions of galaxies you know millions of stars around there right going into some of these worlds and trying to understand it. it is absolutely essential for all of us to start to embrace these facts these are all truth related so that's why it requires a lot of knowledge you know understanding the true principles of spiritual science and practicing them on your daily life and, and this is where you know the five pillars come in play right where we talk about uh, you know doing your own penance meditation daily irrespective of what may be the situations number one number two practice you know practice 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 number two doing the swadhyayana you know reading some books spiritual books that help you to elevate and uplift your knowledge you know which you are your intelligence right you are actually uplifting your intelligence the iq part eq part of it and third one is sajjana sangatya is where patriji talks about that you being with the higher self masters who have realized masters or enlightened masters who can impart this very knowledge with their with the very fact you know you are with them and then their vibrations kind of bring you into a zero thought state you know help you to transform in a much faster pace and then so slowly comes into the fact where you are actually doing your own satsangam satsangam where you are actually being like minded people coming together in search of truth talking about the truth right it is absolutely essential for all of us as meditators to associate ourselves with the like minded people because the knowledge that you are seeking is not something that can be realized through your eyes nor can be understood or digested with your mind it can only be experienced in that blissful state in that state of no mind and for you to get that you need to talk you need to listen you need to keep repeating it right understanding it digesting it and going through it is the only way that you realize it and that's why doing your own you know a like minded uh, uh, discussions and like minded get togethers for satsangams is a very very important aspect of it so as you start to look at some of these five pillars right it's also very very clear that why the spiritual science makes sense why patriji talks about spiritual scientists why he says you know all pyramid masters are spiritual scientists it's it's not because i am actually reading something out of the ancient scriptures like vedas vedantas or any religious sect for, for that matter and i'm i'm not accepting that something that was told 5000 years how can i accept it today you know everything changes with time so does the scriptures so does the the knowledge within the scriptures there is always this question if but right for me to really experience that am i in the right technique am i in the right path am i doing the right process right some of these basic fundamental questions have to be understood right and that is the reason it is very very essential that you need to have a technique a process a path that can let you experience the very thing that you have read about the very thing that you have been told that very thing our ancestors have been pushing you know generation of generation through families saying that you know we need to be this we need to be that you got to do this you got to do that right but how can i get that experience how can i become that right we talk about all these you know uh, vedic languages right mahavakyas we call them right i am the one there is only one creation right the divine oneness tat tvam asi right we talk about that i am that i am what jesus talks about how do i experience that you know when i am doing certain practices is it even possible for me to go beyond the state of body beyond the state of mind how does how does one feel when you are beyond that state are you just sitting here and then getting into that that motion of it or is it only a vision or is it only a illusion you know how do i know about it so it is absolutely essential as we start to progress our spiritual you know journey 
we also need to embrace these spiritual laws, which is spiritual science, right? the principles of it. That's the reason it is very, very important that we have to become a spiritual. And that's the reason all pyramid masters are spiritual scientists. We not only get the information or seek the information of truth, but we also experience the truth. It is not about me, you know, coming and knowing what the Upanishads talks about it or Vedas talk about it or what Buddhism says about it, you know. It is like whatever has been told in those scriptures, I have experienced it first hand through my own meditation. What if this Anapanasati is not there, right? Where do I go? How do I experience it? There is no way I can experience one divine oneness without me being in that state, right? So, so that's the reason it is, it is very, very important that we have to keep the technique, the path in line and slowly start to develop and understand the spiritual concept, the concept of spiritual science, the new age philosophy, and try to get into some of these things. Now, let's take, you know, a very, I mean, I don't want to go too deeper into it, but just, you know, in the interest of time, I want to touch upon some of these concepts, right? Why it is important? Why is that I am soul consciousness? Why is that I'm not a body consciousness? Right? How do I know about it? Right? It, it, is, it is a very fact that it's like, you know, you are coming in this vehicle of a body, you are doing your part, and then we depart. Right? Mm -hmm. Where does the difference come is when I am in the state of meditation, when I go into the zero thought state, when I am, you know, shunya or mahaparisunya, you start to experience something beyond your limitations of body. You are beyond your senses. You are beyond your physical limitations. The dimensions go beyond. Right? When you are in that state of yourself, you start to see everything around you as yourself. Right? And that is, again, you know, it has to be experienced by oneself. That is the reason all the masters who have actually experienced this oneself, right? the divine oneness have already gave this, hey, you are not the body, you are the soul, you are not the body, you are the soul, right? And yet we keep challenging ourselves, why, why is that I'm not able to do it? Right? The only reason why I'm not able to do it is one, I'm not embracing the technique, what Patriji gave me, or I'm not disciplined enough to kind of get to my meditation practices, doing a couple of hours daily for me to get to that state, right? That's the reason I'm not able to get that. Granted, meditation can do a lot of good to your body healing, you know, emotional balance, your mental balance and all of that. But that's not the purpose. The purpose of it is for you to understand and become a spiritual scientist where everything that has been told to you or everything that has been brought to you or what you have read or what you have understood, you need to start to experience it. And, and that's the reason there is never end. It it's never ends. This keeps on going. The soul always keeps learning, learning, learning the greater knowledge, the higher knowledge. So that is where, you know, the principle of consciousness, we need to accept the fact that I'm not the body, I'm not the mind, I'm not the intelligence, but I am the one that's driving everything that is happening. And I am the consciousness, I am the soul, right? And then when you get that experience is when you kind of, you know, live through that moments. And then when there is no death for you anymore, no problem that can that can harm you anymore because you know whatever is happening is at the body mind level right? nothing can come and touch you beyond the fact so understanding this experiencing it that's what the the concept of you know consciousness right understanding and knowing the self number one number two birth and rebirth comes back to the fact that who is being born who is being you know who who kind of comes to earth and who kind of leaves the earth how do I know about it, right? When you understand that you are soul consciousness, when you understand that you are not the body, then you know, then they, you know, and, and soul is eternal. It stays forever and ever because it's all, it's all divine oneness. When you understand this theory and, and kind of practice that through your meditation, you slowly start to realize the fact that, hey, this body is the one that's coming to earth. Through my body is when I'm starting to learn things. Through my mind, all of these things are happening, whatever is coming my way, right? Slicing and dicing of my life. And eventually I'm leaving the body and going back to my roots. 
again I come back. You know, this process goes on and on and on and on. Birth, rebirth, incarnation, reincarnation. Forever, until the time that you start to realize that, huh, I am done with it now, right? You got to look for the answers. You have questions, but now you are looking for answers. That's when your spiritual science journey, you know, the journey starts with you. Then slowly comes into the point where you talk about law of karma. Like what's the principle of karma? Cause and effect. You start to accept things as they come to you. You start to embrace everything that is happening surrounding you. There will be no questions to ask. Every situation is blessed. Every situation is a learning. Every opportunity that you get, there is always something coming your way. There are no complaints, no judgments, no interference absolutely no comments of whatsoever. The reason for that is everything what you are seeing in your life is something you have designed on your own. And it is happening because you asked for it to happen. Right? As simple as a fly coming and falling or, or you, know, uh, you know, being in front of you or actually, you know, coming onto your hand is also planned. And that's how they say, right? Uh, they say that even a fly that you're seeing outside, even, even something that you're seeing right in front of you, an insect or something, whatever it is you're seeing, right? everything is pre-planned. Everything is, is there. You're just experiencing it as, as it is as a first time. Right? So it is the law of karma. It is the law of cause and effect or action reaction that runs the entire universe. It is this very principle that manages the entire BMI the body, body mind intelligence right buddhi we call that buddhi karma anusarini right? so it is it is this that that runs the whole system and it, this is the highest law no one is exception no one is exception you may be a higher soul but you decide to come to earth for some knowledge imparting for some experience sharing for educating others whatever may be the purpose that you come here you are bound to law of karma None of us are exceptional, right? So it is understanding this cause and effect and living through that in your day-to-day. -day. You know, spiritual science helps you to develop all of that. Then comes the progression aspect of it. What is the progression? No matter what may be the situation that's coming my way, I am always progressing. I'm always going up. There is no regression. There is no coming down. It's always going up, right? How do I go up? Is that your soul is learning. Your soul is learning constantly. Certain good things happen to you, the soul starts to learn from that. Certain bad things happen to you, soul starts to learn from that. A pain has come to you, soul starts to learn from that. There is always learning. So what we call like, you no, know, a, a good deeds, bad deeds, good karma, bad karma, all these things are only at a level of body, mind. When you transcend that, when you become the consciousness, you start to realize that everything, whatever is happening, nothing can touch me. But yet I am going through this. The reason for that you're going through it is you're trying to understand and embrace it and learn from it. The reason why this particular movement, something is happening to me is because this has been designed by me so that I can learn certain aspects of it. And that's the reason, that's how you start to look at it. That's how you start to feel about it. That's how you start to kind of, you know, digest the whole movement. That is the reason the learning happens, right? And then your karmic balances will get released. Gnana, Agni, Karma, Dagdana. Bhagavad Gita, we call that. As you start to realize some of these things, as you start to embrace it, you will understand the law of progression is happening irrespective of where you are. Then comes the law of hastening are the are the principles of yoga right now as the progression is happening how do i speed up this process how do i make sure that i wanted to fast track this whole system you know instead of going through 10000 births i wanted to get in 100 births what is the what is that i need to do that's where it comes you know yoga right whether you practice bhakti yoga, dhyana yoga, gnana yoga, karma yoga, you know, whatever may be the yoga, yoga means it's a union, right? You are in union with whatever it is associated with. And then you are fastening the pace of your journey. 
instead of you going or walking or taking a bicycle you are actually going on a flight right that is the reason you know patriji talks about very very closely you know in terms of dhyana yoga and gnana yoga he talks about gnana yoga is very very important that you need to learn about this knowledge and you need to impart that knowledge to everyone you know you cannot call yourself spiritual scientist if you are not able to talk about it right as much as you experience it with your own practices you also have to come out and talk about that practices that's where the gnana yoga comes in play right he talks at length about some of these concepts as to how you need to position things around how do you need to perceive things around and all that and then again you know in the yogic cultures we talked about anena yunjate yoga ha yoga ha karma du kausalya you know chitta vrutti nirodha you know controlling my mind or bringing balance to my my life all of this is can only happen if you bring yoga to your life if you law it's called principle of hazening right i'm going to fast track my process i'm going to do some of these things in my meditation i'm going to go into the zero thought state i'm going to acquire that knowledge which i am plan to do so in 100 births in this very birth right so you have an opportunity to fast track your own journey to make sure that you are reaching an utmost level right irrespective of where you are and how you are looking at it law of hazening and finally understanding going through deeper level of penance will help you understand it is not just to be around here right like the way earth is there the planet earth is there you have got all other planets number of different worlds are available you do astral travel you go through different worlds you kind of understand that this universe is like infinite kind of a model where things come and things go but yet everything changes by by seconds right milliseconds and all that right you know astral through astral travel through going through this deeper penance of meditation helps you to leave your physical body and bring your subtle bodies outside and go into different worlds meet different astral masters understand the reality of life understand look at the different dimensions right and then also embrace you know what happens in situations what is coming your way looking at your past lives looking at your previous life you know future lives a lot of things a lot of things can happen i mean there is no end to it that's the point the point is right i am not what i am looking at right now is a very limited view of it right when you become unlimited when you connect to that universal consciousness you become unlimited in that unlimited space there are infinite permutations and combinations that you can learn through you can go through you can actually experience through your astral travel and astral projections and that's the you know foremost principle that that talks about it right all of this is only possible through spiritual science right that is the reason patriji says that when you are trying to become a spiritual scientist or when as a pyramid master you try to embrace the technique of anapanasati in your life and then you start to progress in your own spiritual journey you start to kind of bring these principles into your life you start to understand the very essence of what is happening to you at that point there is absolutely no reaction it's only response there is absolutely no surprises to you you don't believe like you know hey you know it is so you are so lucky you know we don't we don't accept there is no luck everything is designed right and then somebody is going to come and rescue you you're not looking for somebody that somebody is you within you right so all these things can only be brought together when you bring that meditation you know daily meditation again you know doing your own swadhyaya sajjana sangatya and then bringing your own like minded satsangams and these practices will help you to evolve in your material life and as well as in your spiritual life now there is always this question about how can my material life be balanced with spiritual life if you have this such a huge understanding or a big picture of everything that is happening surrounding you how can your material life be not good right there is no question about it you will have a, a beautiful moment every second is happiness every second you live with is the peace the peace that that's going to hit you like you know a, a tsunami you know that you cannot even control inside right that is the level of 
peace that you get when you get into that state of being, state of reality, state of blissful, state of pure consciousness, you know. And, and, and all of that is possible through these concepts of what we call the spiritual, you know, uh, spiritual science and spiritual, you know, new age philosophy. I, I, I don't want to bore you guys by kind of keep talking about the subject. But, you know, if you have any questions, you know, feel free to uh, pose it out here. I'm happy to take a couple. And then I uh, wanted to quickly talk about my experience. Right? So like I said, you know, uh, Master was asking me about it. And in my journey, like I said, you know, I went into different modes and different ways in terms of how to transcend myself again, you know, spiritually trying to uplift my, my own soul journey is when I've started to realize over a period of time that all these questions about what is this reality, what is this life about, why am I here, what is my purpose, you know, these questions were there, went through a lot of scripture reading with Upanishads, you know, some Vedic part of it, learned a lot of the scriptures uh, during my early state of my you know, childhood, uh, learned Bhagavad Gita and some of the concepts of it and all, but then there was never a path that's available for me to experience it. Everybody talks about all these, you know, wonderful things that are out there. But then how do I experience that? How do I become that, right? And, and that's when this technique of what, you know, Patriji gave us, gave me an excellent avenue or an opportunity to experience some of them, right? Like a lot of the, you know, my body level changes, you know, I had allergies, you know, that I had, you know, a lot of allergies in my eyes. I have gone through a lot of pain for the last, you know, uh, 10 years back. You know, it was extreme painful. I couldn't even see my through my left eye and all that. All of that is cured through meditation. Again, I did not do it for purpose, but meditation helped me to cure myself into that. There was a severe pain on my right leg that I, I suffered quite a bit on it as well. And then I kind of cued it, you know, it kind of cued itself in meditation for me. A lot of situations in my life turned around. It's like, you know, somebody is actually creating a path for you where you are just walking in, right? I'm not digging my path and walking in. I, I, there is no unknown factor anymore for me, right? A lot of that has been cleared for me, you know, my vision, my goal, where do I need to be? What is my purpose? Why am I here? what's my next 15 years journey would be everything got cleared for me through my you know uh, practice of meditation like again you know uh, so thankful to patriji for for giving me an opportunity to be part of this uh, pss movement uh, but you know it kind of unfolded for me even my family problems or any situations that i go into you know it has become a practice for me now that whatever i do right i kind of you know start doing meditation and then with that, I kind of, you know, solve the problems, right? Again, I don't do it in a very, you know, dependent way. It, it's more so now, you know, my cause is universal cause kind of a, kind of a state, right? So when you are in that state of being, you don't start to look at things at your individual level because your individual consciousness is taken care by the universal consciousness. So you don't have to have any individual... Uh, you know, uh, the beliefs or anything that you wanted. I want this, you know, there are no wants, there are no desires, you know, there is nothing like that anymore. Again, you know, it's, it's all because of deeper, intense meditations, you know, and going through very, very intense state of that blissful, you know, in, the, in that state of zero thought. Uh, you kind of tend to look at yourself, look back your your lives and then, you know, uh, transform the journey, you know, in terms of where you are. This is my overall experience. I've just kind of condensed it in the interest of time. But uh, um, any questions or anything that you guys want to uh, add or comment, please uh, please feel free to do so. Yes, friends. Uh, please ask more questions. Anybody want to ask questions, please pose the questions to Anil, sir. You will clarify whatever you, are, uh, you have started practicing just we have started last five days back. Of course, there are some people, the members who joined in the earlier session. So we do these sessions uh, every month, sir, actually. First, uh, first of month to the 21st of the same month. We'll end one session. Then we'll start the next session with a gap of uh, 10 days. So, so likewise, we are uh, running through all the sessions. Awesome. Friends, awesome. Please pose the questions. So, sir, will clarify whatever your spiritual questions are. Uh, the kind of uh, issues you do you do face during your spiritual journey 
all that yeah no question is good bad ugly right i mean just just ask it you know put it out there yeah you know every question becomes a blog guys you don't want to become a blog right you want to clarify the question and kind of you know have that flow of energy coming through you right don't keep too many things don't expect too much you know expectations is mother of all frustrations so as a beginner right you know we can all see right so there are a lot of questions a lot of unknowns you know a lot of things are coming your way you don't know where you're moving and how you want to whether this is right for me you know all those things you know please air it out air it out that way you know you have no ambiguity when you're when you're getting into the practices Namaste, sir. Yes, please. Uh, uh, that anapana meditation. Uh, if mm -hmm. I want to do regularly on the correct time, uh, same time means any WhatsApp group or any satsang is there, sir, to do that. So this satsang is available to you guys for twenty-one days, right? And there are also lot of satsangs that are happening you know suddenly we should be able to share some of those details where it is and where, where are you located at arti nagar in bangalore, in bangalore? bangalore. bangalore. Okay. yeah yeah pyramid valley you know does a lot of meditations as well beyond this you know you you i mean you can certainly be part of this group here because the fact that you got connected is an excellent thing because you know they, they, they are doing an excellent service here right you should be able to complete your 21 day program then there are programs that are happening at pyramid valley if you are able to visit it uh, you will, you can you can really there are 41 day program there are 90 day programs and there is a daily meditation program I mean, a lot of stuff happens there so you should be able to connect and then get a lot of information you know from, from uh, the, then from uh, the, my house is too far sir from there so it is possible to residential uh, 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 Ar arrangements anything is there i i can stay there and uh, i can attend the classes like that anything uh, yes. opportunity absolutely in yeah. zoom sessions right they do virtual sessions as well they do okay. in person as well but they they do retreats they do silent meditation they do nature meditations and they also do zoom virtual meditations there are daily but every day i do. can't come back uh, home so residential uh, uh, classes are uh, available there so yeah 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 yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah, yeah. all types of programs are available because you know okay. it's been run for last 15 years right i mean it's the, the journey has begun 15 years back with pyramid valley and then uh, you have all types of programs that happen all the time you just need to tap on to the one that kind of connects you from your schedule perspective i think okay. you know uh, pretty much yeah you should be able to get that okay sir so sure yes, sir. thank you very much sir Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions? Yes, Ashok sir, you would like to ask any question? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, good morning, sir. Uh, um, uh, I am very thankful about you, Patri sir, Patri ji, and uh, you have been. Uh, introduced a new person um, uh, uh, sharing the experience. Um, actually, sir, we were uh, in the life, we were adjust to the so many different uh, uh, levels of uh, life. So this attachment, uh, too much of attachment, we were forgotten the truth, uh, true life of uh, living. Uh, oh, soul consciousness and uh, uh, we were not coming into the uh, true life, sir. Uh, there is a lot of hurdles, sir. too much of attachment in the materialistic life. It's very difficult to, to come back to the true life, sir. Right, right. Uh, well, I think, you know, <laughs> see that the 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 formula is only one right no matter whether it is a, a physical problem or, or a material problem or or something that you are experiencing you know in your own ways in different means okay. the answer is only simple you know do your practice daily right? that's what patriji okay. says right never ever leave your breath be with your breath all the time okay. 
So you will start to realize pretty quickly how yes. how you will transcend from the state of body to you know soul as you yes. as you start to embrace the embrace the the meditation right so yes sir yes sir okay sir thank you sir yep thank, thank you thank you, you. Much, sir. thank you very much we will follow your uh, uh, suggestions and also our sir is uh, teaching every day in the morning i was attended last uh, 21 <clears throat> days second time i was attending uh, thank you so much uh, patri <laughs> ji and uh, the whole world uh, organizations i am very thankful to you people sir thank you very much thank you thank you thank you much sundar yeah thank you so much anil master Hello. i think it so uh, oh sorry is it um, is it um, okay to ask a question or is it somebody's yeah, yeah. the question Go ahead. so Yeah Please thanks sir. thank you so much so the question here is what um i do watch this pmc channel very quite uh, every day often so hours together so um so one of the master his name is ravi raju so um recently what i heard from his word even every day you do the meditation like in an hour or more than hour like 5 hours the effect will remain only for 12 hours uh and it it will be impacted only for 2 hours. 12 hours and the aura will be protected for only 12 hours and then you should start meditating to um you know improve your efficiency of increasing the aura so i was just uh, have a question in my mind is that is, is that the uh, the answer is true or it's kind of lingering in my mind so just want so to clarify that yeah it's a good question right so it it is it is on on the same lines right so the the reason why probably you know i don't know the context as to where how he kind of put that response there but in in fact when you start to meditate right your aura start to cleanse yourself right cleanse it and then the energy start to consume in there but then when you start to come out of it you know in a cycle of 12 hours pretty much you will not be doing what you have started right you are actually doing something out of it you know whether you are at office you are at home or you may be sleeping the shift of the cycle happens after 12 hours so it is very likely that the aura where you are in is no longer in the state as to where you when you started it right and that is the reason you will start to see a shift in your aura where the energies have got either disturbed or come back to its normalcy right now what happens is when you are releasing these constant thoughts all these negative thoughts where do they go land in in your aura right they are kind of a blocks when you are trying to get these energies the energies actually is getting fed it you know fed into these negative thoughts in a deeper level that is the reason doing meditation for a longer time at least you know what patri ji says is 3 hours a day is a must if you want to spiritually grow if you want to understand the body mind intelligence and then the bmi and then move on to the soul consciousness 3 hours of meditation is a must the reason for that is it takes so much of that energy to really cleanse your aura and bring back to your normalcy and start to receive those divine energies for you to purify you know your inside and out right that's number one number two when you do that for 3 hours and imagine after 12 hours where you are at are you still doing meditation or are you doing something outside you know are you meeting people greeting people you are at a work you know there may be movements coming your way and your thought process or thought patterns there will be an enormous shift in that so what happens obviously that aura gets affected again and then you go through your channeling again right and then you come back and then you you kind of re reflush all of that through your meditation so yes i mean that, that to answer that question yes it does happen but if you are able to bring back to a point where your aura is you know the thought patterns have been established in a very very you know in a zero thought state kind of a thing at that point the aura is never ever disturbed right and that is the state where we all want to be but there is a journey to get there so there are two aspects here if you really look at it the aspect of body mind if i am talking at a body mind level at a conscious level body mind and i start to do meditation for one hour you know half an hour whatever right i am able to clear off my aura because my energies you know i've got these energies i was in a zero thought state for 45 minutes so you know in our in my one hour meditation i cleansed it up and then i go back and then i reaccumulate 
now i am always imagine that i am always in a in a zero thought state there is no mind for me it's 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 like an enlightened state right where you are not using your mind for anything there is no positive there is no negative there is no thought at all so at that point your aura is always clean pure so you don't need to do you know 3 hours or 5 hours or 6 hours and all that right so that's why patri ji talks about this concept of you know do this meditation for 90 days or 120 days or, or put some timeline and get to that state after you get to that state you no longer have to come down because you are always in that state of be make sense okay no, thank you so much anil very clear information thank you thank you friends any more questions it's an opportunity for all of you friends you can post the right questions can seek the answers the master hello sir yes ah uh, sir nan gauri maatadtirodu yeah sir nimugantu hats off a helvek sir yakantandre ನಾನಂತ ನನ್ ಮಗಳ ಸಲುವಾಗಿ ಬೆಳಗ್ಗೆ ಟಿಫನ್ ಗಿಫನ್ ಅಂತ ಹೇಳಿ ಮೆಡಿಟೇಶನ್ ಮಾಡಿ ಲೈನ್ ಎಲ್ಲ ಸಾರಿ ಅಂತ ಹೇಳಿ ಹೋಗ್ತೀನಿ ಬಟ್ ಒಂದಿನಾನು ನೀವು ನನಗೇನು ಅಂದಿಲ್ಲ ಬಟ್ ನೀವು ಮೆಡಿಟೇಶನ್ ಮಾಡು ಅಂತಾನೆ ಸಪೋರ್ಟ್ ಮಾಡ್ತೀರಾ ಥ್ಯಾಂಕ್ ಯು ಸರ್ ಅಷ್ಟೇ ಥ್ಯಾಂಕ್ ಯು ಹೇಳಕ್ಕೋಸ್ಕರನೇ ಇದು ಮಾಡಿದೆ ಸರ್ ಥ್ಯಾಂಕ್ ಯು ಸೋ ಮಚ್ ಸರ್ ಇಷ್ಟೊಂದು ಸಪೋರ್ಟ್ ಮಾಡ್ತಿದ್ದೀರಾ ನನ್ನ ಪ್ರಾಬ್ಲಮ್ ಅರ್ಥ ಮಾಡ್ಕೋತಿದ್ದೀರಾ ಥ್ಯಾಂಕ್ ಯು ಸೋ ಮಚ್ ಸರ್ ಸೊ uh yeah that the actually i i am trying to tell in english for others to understand here oh, okay. in pssm we are not going to force anybody we are not going to demand anybody to continue your practice or you know we only guide you we only provide the wisdom and we also we always open the platform to practice more and more meditation so in that case what happen the people want to voluntarily they come they practice they grow their spiritual wisdom they lead their materialistic and spiritual life in a more blissful way so that's what the aim of the psc is the no no roach no rituals no compulsions no demands by the friends thank you sir thank you thanks a lot <laughs> bye thank sir thank you thank you ma'am yes. friends yes sir so i have a question yeah sir, my name is kavita i was introduced to this by a friend mamita uh, actually i am uh, new to this and i have read and uh, learned about meditation and stuff i'm still uh, into this path newly and uh, i'm trying to practice and uh, no but uh, as i get so much of information that i'm doing i get into this mode of you know right or wrong or what is to be done and all that stuff so Uh, any inputs of how i should uh, approach and how i should continue to get into the right directions i i am i am having some physical ailments so i am trying to come out of that as well no oh, absolutely right uh-huh. i mean uh-huh. I the, the technique, what you are doing is the same technique that you continue to do whether it is a body alignments or a physical level or a subtle level or mental level you know at any level right? this is the only technique right so you are in the right path you are in the right you know right track you just have to you know accept that fact right number number 2 you know it is absolutely okay right you will start to find these flavors of information coming your way some would embrace it some would talk about you know saying that why are you even wasting time you know you know in, in my journey right there are people who said you know <laughs> when you close your eyes you're saying that you know closing your eyes you're gonna you're gonna you're gonna cleanse out your you're gonna you're gonna start to heal your body i mean you you kidding me you know right? and then when i showed it right that's when they realized that the the fact that you know when you close your eyes the miracles do happen right now I, it is very understandable that at this state if you are very new to this you may not be able to really come out of it right but what i would suggest right is to tag along to the groups like this right you know the masters here right mahavatar foundation the team is doing an excellent work here right this is like they are doing it for free there is absolutely no obligation whatsoever 
you just have to tag along and listen to the wisdom as to each of these masters are bringing and when you start to listen to them you try to understand you get a perspective out of it when you look at that perspective when you try to experience that you know the two thing needs to happen the constant knowledge sharing information right in terms of what you are learning from a higher level perspective and then your own practices if you are able to keep on these two pillars together in a very short time you'll be coming out of those negative flavors of what is coming your way the physical alignments or misalignments whatever you are going through you just have to embrace them right don't try to fight them when you try to fight them you give more energy to it what you need to do is you need to start to take the meditation right maybe you know you can talk to the masters here offline and kind of talk about your situation where you are and then they will be able to advise you as to what should be your meditation you know timing wise what may be certain things that you may probably bring some change in your you know daily life you know what food you eat you know what kind of things you are doing you know some of those aspects have a direct impact uh, on your health as well right so but but you are you know Uh, we all have been through your movements right so 30 25 years back you know when i started my journey i was on the same lines and in fact i kind of dissected and then came back um so so keep connecting to this group here keep doing meditation listen to the experienced masters who bring information to the table like the spiritual information to the table that will help you to uplift yourself and negate all that you know noise that comes your way thank you sir thank you hello good morning sir yeah morning please uh, how to come out the cycle of birth and rebirth knowing that how to come out of cycle of birth and rebirth yeah. is knowing that you are not the one going through it and how do you kind of get that experience is through your meditation right when you start to do meditation what happens is you gain sufficient energies in your system when you gain sufficient energies in your system you will tap on to that knowledge frequencies that are available the higher self knowledge when you start to get that information and when you start to digest and experience that you will understand within you that you are no longer the one who is going and coming it is the body the vehicle that is coming and going so always keep doing your meditation for you to get that greater knowledge higher knowledge you need to have energies and for you to get energies it is only through meditation you get that energies okay okay thank you sir yeah good question yes friends any more questions Yes. Good morning, sir. Yes, ma'am. Sir, thank you so much, sir. This is the second time I'm attending. Actually, last time when I started attending, uh, like uh, very few sessions I could able to attend because I was always into traveling and uh, you know more amount of uh, informations. Also, I used to gather uh, whenever I used to travel. But here and there, I had got missed. So this is the second opportunity you have given us. Uh, to attend this uh, uh, session like mahavatar uh, foundation to and uh, every day you are giving one or the other you uh, know very important information like satsang and uh, feeling always uh, positive towards any activity we do and uh, how we have to lead our you uh, know day to day life by using mudras uh, so few of mudras are like i started you uh, know uh, practicing uh, Uh, whenever i i have been scheduled uh, my uh, day to day work also sir so uh, uh, little more uh, information uh, uh, how, how like uh, we have to control our uh, uh, you know uh, many thoughts it like provoking us to in between the meditation session because uh, we will be having like day to day uh, routine works and uh, many fatigue and monotonous things it will be keep on coming and uh, hindering us so uh, a small suggestion if you can give sir it would be helpful sir yeah i mean you know 
there are see it is first of all acceptance right accepting that when you are starting to meditation it is a very well known fact that you are now become conscious of your thoughts right yes. even now when we are outside of meditation right the thoughts are happening but i am distracted because i am looking at outside right uh, my eyes are the index of my mind right i am my eyes are open i am distracted yes. but my thoughts are still going on so what yes. is happening when you are sitting in meditation is you are actually becoming aware of those thoughts when you start to kind of think about it the more and more you think that i am getting more thoughts i am getting more thoughts you are actually giving a lot of energy to it where your thought frequencies will go and go up the number of thoughts that you get will go increasingly heavy mm-hmm. what you need to do is you need to start to accept the fact that you know in my meditation i will get thoughts because yes. this these thoughts what you are getting is not from today right or not from this yes. birth in fact right they may be coming from anywhere else yes. what happens is when you start to sit and do meditation mm-hmm. you are trying to go beyond the state of mind for which the mind is not your friend right the first thing what mind does is mind tries to stop you at that state to make sure that you are coming out of the meditation yes so that's the reason when you are starting as a beginner when you do these meditations you need to understand this number one number two in your meditation during the cycle of your meditation accept the fact that you know i will get the thoughts but then remember that i need to bring my attention to my breath right so the best best way to look at is when you sit in the meditation right uh, you know going into the observing your breath before that maybe repeat it three four times that I, i need to be aware that when i am with my thoughts i need to come back to my breath right do that or when you get your breath you can take a deeper you know when, when you are with your thoughts you are kind of going away with the thoughts right you can actually take deeper breath and then come back so there are different ways you know and means as to how you don't get carried away by the by the thought because and then you have you also need to understand that when you are with your thought there is no meditation happening please we all have to understand this when you are with your thought there is no meditation you are actually sitting at that point when you are with your breath is when the meditation is happening i'm not saying you know remember right this is about happening this is not about doing whatever yes. is happening when you come to your breath it happens it naturally happens whatever needs to happen happens but when you are with your thoughts you are giving energy right and the and the and the difference and subtle difference between you being with thought versus you being with your breath is in thoughts you let go energy your energy is drained in thoughts whereas when you are with your breath you are gaining energies hmm. right understanding these subtle differences and knowing about it will help you when you when you actually sit in the meditation right and, and then don't fight it though right so there is also other notion that you know we tend to fight it saying that why am i getting i should not get it hey I, they they told me that stop it and then come back here go back there you know all these things will confuse you just accept it as they come to you remember this that you need to come back to your breath yes and then as you start to you know again association with this group here every day masters will come they talk about lot of different subject and lot of different even knowledge that you gain as you kind of take that information and and sink it in slowly you will start to see lot of changes within you yes sir and the thoughts it is guaranteed right if you are able to sustain this group here right with 21 day meditation or 41 days meditations and all the mm. cycle will change the thoughts frequency will come down the number of freq- the, the 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 it's called vector equilibrium right between a thought right right now you may have a pattern where the thoughts are happening continuously there is no gap between them as you start you know day 7 day 15 day 21 day 30 you know 40 you know what happens is the frequency between the thoughts will will actually change right it it goes up the timing you know this called vector equilibrium the gap between thought to thought goes up and the number of thoughts that you are getting will reduce significantly that's why 
it is recommended that you do for 41 days or 20, you know, whatever these programs are there for, right? Join these programs, keep doing the meditation, you know, get the inspiration and motivation. And then yes. you will see the change, you know, after 41 days. True, sir. Good question. Very good question. I mean, this is a very, very good question that uh, most likely everybody will will ask when, when we come to meditation. So, good question. Very thankful to Chennam, sir, sir. Every day, you know, very good information, sir, is providing us regarding the food habits and, you know, uh, how much we need to eat, like vegetarianism and, uh, you know, the sprouts also once, uh, sir, told, I used to have an assumption like uh, sprouts means we have to uh, take out the sprouts and, you know, we have to have as it is uh, without boiling. But uh, I think two days before, sir, has told, like, uh, you know, our kidneys uh, will not have so much of, uh, you know, strength uh, to digest uh, uh, such a raw food and all. And uh, uh, truly, sir, uh, these are all things, no, we, we are like somewhere uh, we will be uh, not knowing like how to uh, have the food uh, style and all. So, sir is providing us a very good information, sir. We are very much thankful to sir, always, sir. And you also, sir, today, you have given lots of information about the spiritual world. And uh, it's it's like a very good session, sir, because I'm staying far away from uh, my uh, family, sir. Like a uh, day before yesterday, I was attending the session and, uh, you know, the transfer process begin for us. Mm, so, uh, like day before yesterday, I got selected uh, to Kolar, sir. Actually, I'm working for Bijapur now. Uh, it's like 600 kilometers far away from my family. So I got a very good, uh, you know, uh, posting uh, again back to pavilion, like uh, I can join to my family. So I was having all that, you know, thoughts and uh, what sir was saying, like, uh, uh, be confident and uh, be positive and, you know, uh, keep having your uh, control on all your thoughts. So all these things really, it helped me a lot. And whenever that process begin, actually, it was uh, like online process. So I was thinking about sir, uh, sir has told like this, no, like all the sessions, uh, uh, true, true, it will happen. It, because I was there in the waiting list, 14 people, uh, no, have to leave and then I, I have to lift up. So God's grace and, you know, all of your uh, wishes, maybe 21 people left out um, in the process. So I got it uh, to my native only, sir, day before yesterday. Thank you so much, sir, Chennam, sir, and uh, also, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks for sharing. So, Masters, if uh, no questions, then we can enter into the wisdom. We can enter into the practice of meditation. So, sir, let me, let me summarize. Sir, uh, the wonderful wisdom you have shared today, for all of us, like uh, we have imbibed into the, the great spiritual wisdom, the depth of spiritual wisdom. You have shared us under unconditional love, unconditional acceptance, unconditional forgiveness is what you have really stressed upon. So, which are so important principles one must uh, accommodate. And also, you have really delved into all the laws of spiritual science, principles of spiritual science. So, that's about all law of consciousness, reincarnation, karma, law of constant progression, law of yoga and law of infinity. So, these are the wonderful spiritual laws. Sir, we have really dwelled into and we got a deeper perspective of all this. And also, so when you mentioned it, so you rightly and you are guided such a, such a way that every one of us to lead 50% metallistic life, 50% spiritual life, so that that is taken care. Everything of our requirements, day-to-day -day desires, all this, you know, whatever things are there, get fulfilled. So you rightly said that the universal consciousness will really take care of individual requirement, individual consciousness. So that means, so as we really go through our the metallistic life, most of us, like, you know, just to take an example, the children will never ask what, what he does need in, in day, to day, day to day life. The parents will obviously take care of what he needs. So it means you don't need to ask specifically what, what he needs in education, what he needs in personal aspect. So all that will be looked after by parents. So it means that we are also the children of God. So the, the you can say like universal consciousness. 
the definitely the god will always take care of us and what we need what we near what we are going through he will guide us he will provide all the requirements so that's how i think we need to live with the uh, we need to live with the universal consciousness this is the right point you are touched upon so we are very thankful to you sir for the wonderful wisdom wonderful Thank wisdom you, you have said you have enlightened us towards the the deeper perspective of spiritual wisdom today so friends after the after imbibing such a the the deeper perspective of our spiritual wisdom let's sit for meditation now your your meditation will become so much more stronger and deeper so let's all sit for the meditation for next 20 20 minutes or so okay so sir uh, i i request you to guide in the initial in the small time so later on everybody will go into the deep meditation i will also put on a slight music the mild music will be going background yes sir awesome thank you master thank you and then thanks again for the opportunity uh, friends masters and thank you very much uh, master for the thanks sir thank yeah sir. taking the opportunity you know thank you sir these moments like this right is where we come to the senses of reality and uh, it's it's a wonderful wonderful thing you know uh, thank you thank you thanks again so let let us all sit very comfortable um comfortably in your seats or chairs or wherever you are seated please uh, take off your glasses if you're wearing one and uh, be in a very comfortable comfortable seating right it is important before you start meditation you are in a very comfortable state make sure your body is absolutely relaxed just head to toe scan through your body make sure there is no stress no pressures absolutely nothing right anywhere you feel little bit of a distress or stressor just have a beautiful intention or bring your attention to that part of the body then you will free up that stress or the movement there as you start to feel relaxed as you start to be with your own self slowly start to bring your attention to your breath very slowly if you are not able to feel the breath or be aware of the breath take one or two deep breaths then you will start to be aware of your breath slowly bring your attention to your breath as you bring your attention to your breath make sure you're not putting too much of a focus on it just try to have a beautiful smile on your lips as you start to have a smile on your lips you will start to observe your breath through your third eye third chakra third eye chakra agna chakra and the energies within that agna chakra will also get activated or recycled so you will start to feel the energies the prana the swasa the breath going inbound and slowly coming outbound just relax slowly be with your breath my dear friends just witness your breath become one with your breath as you start to go deeper and deeper and deeper thoughts will come let them come just acknowledge the thought and bring your attention back to your breath let us all be with our breaths meditation is happening my dear friends meditation is not doing there is nobody who is doing meditation it is happening on its own as you are aware of your breath as you are with your breath things happen to you 
Vi är ju tjämnat. Maria Frims. Vi är ju tjämnat. Vi är ju
last two minutes, my dear friends. Be with your natural breath, last two minutes. Last one minute, final one minute of meditation. Last 30 seconds, final 30 seconds. Final 10 seconds, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. Place your both hands on your both eyes for 5 more seconds, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. Slowly open your eyes, slowly take up your hands. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thanks for your 
the great guidance so for your guided meditation thank you thank you so friends uh today's wonderful session the great spiritual wisdom and followed by the wonderful practice of meditation we all really enjoyed we all went in deep meditation for this last 20 minutes so as well sir actually what we do is in every day session we first have a this satsang about spiritual wisdom then after followed by practice of meditation we do then followed by the holistic lifestyle we discuss about every day one holistic life lifestyle tip we share with the, all the participants it means that what is the kind of food you have to eat what is the kind of lifestyle practices you have to make in order to make your body mind in conjunction with your sadhana so your sadhana your deep sadhana can only happen when you have a sound body sound mind so obviously the mind and beyond mind you are well versed with the through the spiritual spiritual practices we all will get into the the kind of a great practices then it will uh, practice or the mind and the soul can be always put in a proper condition and the body especially with the what are the input of our body that is food the food and of course lifestyle practices we try to give them some tips on the food and lifestyle practice every day and followed by we also share with them some mudra therapy that is actually mudra vigna we call it as a mudra vigna so there is also one Uh, every day one particular mudra we share with them so that's actually a uh, developmental mudra or sustaining mudras are there of course there are therapeutic mudras are there so we share with them so you the participants will get benefit out of these two classes so these two the things we share with them so actually today uh, we have uh, the friends today we have as we posted in the whatsapp group yesterday we will have a discussion about water the importance uh, importance of water the role of water in our daily life so actually it's a very wide subject big subject the lengthy subject but still we try to discuss few things so what is the importance of water in our daily life so let me go into a small um, the depth of uh, water so how this water is good helpful for us in our daily life so first of all when we when we are born as an infant so let's start from that point of view so when we are born in infant what will happen is let's say just after the birth what will happen we try to drink mother's milk okay so we used to all our food is supplied to the infant through the mother milk my dear friends so in that point of time we always go with the liquid that means fluid and liquid so the mother milk is a fluid and liquid we live with that for quite amount of time maybe a one year to two three years max sometimes it's max about 3 years but nowadays it's almost limited to 1 year most of the times so this is the highly nutrient rich food rich fluid but it's a food for infant that's right so what will happen now at this point of time whenever infant cry what mother does it gives the, she feeds her the breast milk so his or her that's infant the thirst or a, you can say like hunger get quenched get satisfied so in again be happy so that is the way it happens what happens after after an year what happen so again see see you know uh, infant or a child so slowly it becomes a kid you know he start crying for the food so generally what happen he start crying for what for his hunger or or you can say for a thirst what we try to do always is this the one thing called thirsting thirst when we drink water in normal life when you become thirsty but friends to our surprise we all lost the one thing called one thing one instinct called thirst which is lost from our adult life try to understand why it is lost i'm trying to come to the point now slowly so the thirst is lost because that is an instinct by dear friends most of the times you need to understand when you drink water means you have become thirsty when you are drinking water this instinct is lost from our our lives why it is lost so a mother always try to feed milk and then his thirst or hunger get satisfied then slowly what happen after one year or two years what will happen when he again uh, cry cry for the food what happen after one year generally mother start feeding instead of liquid he st- start feeding solid solid food because what will happen when the body is growing 
you mother milk alone is not sufficient because the all the tissues bones and organs start get building that means they are start growing so then you need rich rich proteins nutrients and vitamins so all these are required for a physical body my dear friends then what happened the uh, the mother finds that so now the mother milk no more mother milk is sufficient for him or her then she start feeding solid so whenever he cry for what cry for a you know hunger or thirst what it, what she does is she always try to understand okay he is hungry then she go and feed the solid she never think that he is crying for what you know he is crying for thirsty the the thirst the thirst is there so he is crying for maybe 2 or 3 years time what happen he doesn't have much speech you can't express himself that you know he is looking for water what you do is what mother does is most of the time out of her own love and affection she go and again feed some solid food again some solid food again some solid food what will happen is slowly 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 the thirst that is the instinct of every human being in fact every living being on this earth planet you know most of the animals try to observe birds animals whenever they feel thirsty she or he she go and take the water from the water water from any resource wherever available they drink water when they feel thirsty that instinct is very much active the instinct in us it get deactivated by the time 3 or 4 years my friends because of our own practice of growing parents doesn't know about it they are unaware of this fact slowly slowly the thirst that is the instinct which is lost from our lives then what happen as you are growing you feed always you feed always you know keep feeding the solid food solid food and the amount of water intake completely gets reduced that is why the importance of water i am trying to discuss today i give you the the great insight of water friends what will happen is this water as i told you this is responsible this is really the great amount of uh, importance is there i will try to tell you so the water intake if you sufficiently take it the first of all our body every the body is designed with cells right the body building blocks is cell the cell as per the french scientist alexia carrel he says that every cell is immortal it's an immortal aspect of your body you can live for any long number of years your body can sustain and live for any long number of years as long as the cell is cell is active you take care of the cell health my dear friends how to take care of the cell health there are few things in your life you, you must follow it along with our spiritual practices that is one of the requirement other than that what you need to do to do is pure water pure air pure consciousness and light food friends one thing you try to understand in our life up to the age of 25 years we all need the good amount of food rich food nutrient food my dear friends till the age of 25 years only your body all the organs the formation and the strengthen and the building gets completed beyond 25 years still what happens is nowadays many doctors many scientists and many outside in society used to observe follow this diet follow that diet feed this much food feed that much food give this kind of nutrient that kind of nutrients is of no use my dear friends try to understand this is the secret of life one must understand very clearly so till the age of 25 years all your all your cells all your organs all your tissues all your the the complete the skeleton of body all the organs will be completely built up your building process is completed what else you need to do beyond 25 years all the food all the nutrients all the everything whatever a food type of food you take it is only for sustenance it is only for sustaining the life that's what we need to do but otherwise what happen many of the people are got confused they try to feed heavy amount of food and if you take uh, to our uh, real surprise the so called high scholars the software professionals and the who are highly educated 
they start feeding the high protein like a non vegetarian they used to feed what is the importance of this food you try to understand there is no requirement of that of that kind of a high need high highly protein food such as non veg of course it is a animal protein which is never digestible in your physical body our physical body can only digest we have only digestive juices and enzymes only to digest the plant based protein my dear friends so there is no question of there is no requirement of taking such a highly protein non vegetarian animal protein food into your body into your physical body my dear friends so having so much high education you are you, they don't have the living science of living they never understood and in the in the school age in the college age nobody taught them what kind of food style what kind of lifestyle so we are unfortunate that this particular kind of education is not part of our regular curriculum we are very unfortunate my dear friends of course the holistic lifestyle holistic food style and the meditation these three must be part of every curriculum right from the infant stage that means right from the kid right from the children who are started from nursery till the last stage of uh, the higher education it must be accommodated friends so try to understand that's what i explained to you the importance of food beyond 25 years is not much try to understand many of the many of the people many of the yogis they live on only sunlight air and water not even water my dear friends i have the i have the instances of sun yogi you might have heard many of people might have heard sun yogi in india he, he is a native of kolkata i met him i have got an opportunity i, I was also fortunate to spend lot of time with him he lived on the basing of only sunlight he practices sun yoga every day morning then he receives the sun energy friends try to observe around around you the nature you observe all the plants they take sunlight they take water they take carbon dioxide they synthesize they generate their own food they synthesize all these three elements they generate the glucose inside them to the help of the glucose what they do they try to generate all the proteins all the required proteins required required nutrients all the minerals all the vitamins they prepare and supply to the human being whenever you eat any food plant based food you get all these nutrients my dear friends how it is preparing to try to understand is it eating any food is it yet is it taking any solid food inside no the same way all of us even the animal beings and the human beings can survive just on the basis of sunlight it is very much possible try to understand see what your cell needs the sunlight gives all the vitamins all the required minerals to your body of course you can add the good quality water along with that and the pure air and the pure consciousness this is the most essential fundamental elements to keep your cell live and healthy then you can live you can have a longevity of your life till the last breath what is uh, design already we are destined to leave this physical body of course one one, one fine day that all there is all destined predetermined my dear friends anyway let's let me go to the the i try to give you the what is the kind of water you have to take quality of water how much water you need to take so it's a very vast subject we can keep talking hours together days together such a vast subject water is anyway i'll try to touch upon few points which are helpful for us in our daily life so how much water one supposed to take let me tell you the water amount of water intake must be 6% of your weight this is the calculation statistics which is found by scientist water scientist so that is if you are 60 kg of weight you must take 6% of it about 3.6 liter in a day how to split this water the consumption of this 3.6 liter in a day i'll try to explain you friends the morning when you wake up from the bed try to take 300 ml that is one glass of water approximately just after wake up or one or two glass also you can take so what will happen if you take that two glass of water 
immediately just stop waking up from the bed. So it makes sure that all your cleansing will be very much proper. The cleansing will happen in a very properly all the wastage from your body, all your metabolic waste will be, will be removed in the form of urine, my dear friends. That is must. One must do it. Okay. So, and try to understand, it also brings a lot of hydration to your cells. And one more point I would like to highlight here. All the diseases are formed inside your body because of dehydration of the cells, my dear friends. This is a fact. We don't come across this fact all the time in our life. Nobody is there to teach us. So the dehydration of every cell in your body brings back the, the kind of illness, the kind of, a, the kind of ill health into your body. The dehydration must be avoided means you must definitely take the intake, intake of water must be proper. Always keep it hydrated. That is the principle of health. Keep your cells hydrated all the time. Friends, try to understand, we are having 70% in our body, 70% of water inside us. The 70% of water inside the entire globe of Earth planet, my dear friends. We can find what is the importance of water. Try to understand. And we also have 95, 93% of water in our brain. You think that brain is brain looks solid for you. But do you do you definitely know? Try to understand the, the brain has 93% of water. Whatever you understand, the clear research showed 90, 93% of water. The blood, what it is, the blood inside you. A, a, a normal human being will have about six, five to six liter of blood. Inside the blood, 95% of water. Why do we say our uh, meditation to be done exce excessively? That means the deep meditation we have to do on the full moon day. Full moon day, if you do meditation, because your, your entire body, your brain itself has got 93% water. If you do the meditation on the full moon day, a deep sadhana, if you take up, what will happen is it will really calm down the water inside your brain. So what will happen is otherwise on the full moon day because of the gravitation pull. So you are you get lot of you know hike in the thoughts. The the aggressive thoughts will start coming out. That is why many people you observe they are dis mentally disordered people it act in a more aggressive way on the full moon day because the gravitation pull will be there. So if you go through meditation that particular day. One advantage is you receive the cosmic energy, more cosmic, cosmic energy. At the same time, you can calm down all the brain waves. Otherwise, it pulls down, pulls up. So that's the other aspect of the water with respect to the, the practice of meditation. Because your brain has got 93% of water. Anyway, this is the importance of water. So that is why all the time we should give high priority to the pure water, the drinking water, my dear friends. So now coming back to the consumption of water. So first in the morning after wake up, you have taken two glasses of water. It gets all hydration will taken care. The cleansing of your bowel and the wastage, metabolic wastage will go out properly. Then after what you have to do? Before the breakfast, you try to take one glass of water. Before the breakfast, it must be minimum half an hour to 45 minutes before. Not at the time of breakfast, my dear friends. You should not do that. Okay, so what will happen is now before the breakfast, one before half an hour to 45 minutes of uh, breakfast, you have taken one more glass of water that is required. Then during the breakfast, what must be done? During the breakfast, you can take small sips if required, but do not take more water or glass of water during the breakfast. We should not do that. The reason being, whenever you take food, Whenever you look at the food, the moment you look at the food, what happened? The digestive juices start generating in your, inside your stomach. So then at that point of time, if you take more water, it gets diluted. When it gets diluted, what happens? What are the food intake you do? The food will not be digested properly. It produces a lot of gases. It's, it, it leads to a lot of other problems, my dear friends. We should not do that. That's why the importance of water is during the food you are taking, you must not take more water. Only sip, sip by sip. If, requ if required, you take it. 
And then after what happened? Now then comes to lunch. In between the lunch and dinner, lunch and breakfast, what you need to do is take one more glass of water, 3 mm, 3 mm of water in between. You can take in the center, center point. Let's say you take 9, nine o'clock, then 1 o'clock your uh, lunch time, then take about 11 o'clock, one more glass of water. That is about one and a half hour before your lunch. You can take one more glass of water. All this, I'm telling you, 3.6 liter for a 60 kg person. I'm just dividing it. Okay. Then, then comes to the lunch time. So you have taken already one half glass of water before lunch, one and a half hour. Then on the lunch time, during the lunch time also, one must not take any water. Try to remember this, not to dilute your digestive juices. Then after, after lunch is over, then goes to the dinner. Before the dinner, what happened? In between, definitely you can take again one or two glasses of water. But you must always leave one and a half, two hours minimum after lunch or a breakfast, whatever it is. It can be a breakfast, it can be a lunch, two or a dinner. Two hours you must give a gap to take any amount of water. You can take one or two glasses after lunch also. You can take one or two glasses, no problem. But give two hours minimum gap. Why? Because during the digestion process is going on, if you put any water inside your stomach, it gets diluted. It gets diluted, it produces a lot of gas, you become, it becomes acidic, and then what will happen is the, your the metabolic waste, the, uh, the waste also, really the wastage also, the more wastage will become. The, because it doesn't digest properly, what will happen? All that becomes a waste. So the wastage will increase, then it produces a lot of negative bacteria. Because it decays inside. It is not digested. When the any food you take, if it gets digested properly, then only it, it, it produces the proper amount of glucose into your blood. The glucose is your energy, my dear friends. The glucose is essential for functioning of all the organs. That's the physical energy. The physical energy is essential in order every organ to function. So that is why, so in order to have proper glucose generation, your food must be digested till the last particle. To accomplish that, to enable that, one must not disturb the digestive process by taking excessive amount of water during the course of di digestion. Remember this. That is why I, I always suggest after the food, two hours you leave, then drink water, two glass of water. Now that's over. Then you come to the dinner. So before the dinner, probably you have one more hour extra, take one glass of water, one hour minimum before dinner. Then you finish the dinner, whatever the time it is, 7 o'clock, 8 o'clock. The best time is 7 to 8, right? That for that, again, food style, lifestyle, we have a lot of subject to discuss with. Anyway, so go to the next. After the dinner, after the dinner, my dear friends, you need to give again two hours gap. At the time before going to the bed, take one glass of water. Because throughout the night, the digestion process, excretion process, of course, the digestion process, as per Ayurveda, digestion process must be finished before getting onto the bed. That's a highly healthy requirement, my dear friends. The principle of health, that is mandatory. But what happens? Nowadays, due to modern culture, the modern lifestyle, people start eating. People are still eating at the time of 12 o'clock, 11 o'clock, 1 o'clock. What is the kind of, you know, madness which is going through. So that's why try to understand. Anyway, when you are getting on the bed, your digestion process must be completed so that what will happen? You won't get any sleep in the dreams. The kind of dream sleep is going to happen when there is a digestion process going on. Because what happened? Your brain will be still working. Who will be controlling? Who will be monitoring this digestion process? Your brain only. Then you are keeping your brain still in function mode during the sleep also because you are still the food is remained in your stomach undigested, my dear friends. That is not to be done. That is not supposed to be done. Okay. So friends, after the dinner, two hours cap, then drink one glass of glass of water. Then you get on the bed. Then the whole night is excretion, excretion process. Digestion process will be completed all the time. It's already completed. The excretion during the night, you are allowed to have only excretion process. Try to understand. 
then only all your metabolic waste will be ready to expel out by the time you woke up in the early morning that's the that's the mandatory requirement my dear friends to have a the holistic lifestyle the perfect health with you physical health okay so now so this is this is the overall, overall the water consumption cycle one must follow every day okay try to understand this and then also we need to understand the what kind of water we need to drink the kind of water what we drink that is also most important right so now we understood the consumption the type of con the the water cycle consumption we understood better way now we need to understand what kind of water we need to take so nowadays friends if you if you see the water what we drink in all the places so we have chlorinated water through our taps through our bore wells and whatever we get the water is really contaminated you need to take you need to take care of this so water what we take it must be having the ph value about 7.2 the ph value of water is must be 7.2 you should not have more hardness okay try to have hardness limited to 150 to 200 you always have two meters with you because what happened now in nowadays even the cities so called rich cities rich urban urbanites all people are drinking the water which doesn't have the quality that is more most most unfortunate my dear friends whatever advancement happened the technology no one is spending even the scientists are not spending good amount of time on the exploration on the research on the water they are not doing it but it is as i told you 70% of our body is filled with the water how important it is for the perfect health perfect physical health my dear friends anyway so we'll have small glimpse of and small inputs on what kind of quality of water i am giving you so after that we'll go to the mudra therapy because it's a lengthy subject again i have about 10 chapters chapters to cover on the water itself okay fine so friends what will happen is the ph value and hardness you need to be careful about this nowadays what are the water supplied in the city it is a chlorinated water or a borewell water there is no question of a river water comes into even the the water supplied through taps is a chlorinated water because they get from reservoirs and dams water will come through the pipe and then they add the chlorination because to kill the bacteria and virus they do that but it's a harmful my dear friends it's harmful definitely harmful that's why all this research what scientists have taken up they introduce the uh, so called uv filter normal candle filters after candle filters they introduce now nowadays uv that is aqua guard uv filter then comes to ro then comes to softeners all this required because i'll tell you the chlorination the odor smell chlorination all these uh, chemicals will be removed through uv filter that is why everybody of everyone everyone of us in our family in our uh, house we use that uv filter of course it's required now nowadays it's required because we are not near the well in olden days in our ancient villages what will happen there was a water the fresh water available a spring water it's a mineral water is that is a real mineral water my dear friends you know one uh, a sarcastic one sarcastic notice whatever the whatever you think you are drinking a mineral water through you know kindly bisleri bisleri whatever it is outside it is not mineral water it's a dead water for your sur surprise have one ph meter have one tds meter you measure it what is the ph what is the ph value and what is the tds so called total dissolved salts friends tds of any good drinking water must be 100, 100 to 150 please note down 100 to 150 must be what is the tds value of a mineral water a bisleri water a kenly water is 30 to 40 30 to 50 where do you get the sufficient minerals supply to your body potassium magnesium calcium all these minerals how do you supply to your body of course you can supply through other substances the solid substances but it comes it comes with a cost all the solid substances which supply these minerals to your body they need lot of digestion power to be utilized lot of energy will be consumed in order to produce those substances that is why if you have a good water if you have pure air if you have pure sunlight if you have pure consciousness you can live any amount of years on this earth planet you don't need a solid food my dear friends 
you don't need the more and highly nutrient, highly rich solid food is never required to your body. You have got confused with the modern medical systems, the modern practices. Let's not go into that kind of confused. Okay, fine. So I, I told you the kind of water, drinking water must be, your TDS must be 100, 100 to 150. Keep the TDS meter with you. Keep the pH meter with you, pH meter. Friends, the blood in our, in, in our body, the blood, the, the quality of the blood is decided based on the pH value of the blood. If you take the, if you take the drinking water, which is the having pH value of 7, 7.2, your blood also will be purified. It also will have the pH value of 7, 7.5. That is the alkaline blood. What is the alkaline? What is, what is the acidity? The acidi acidic food or acidic water and acidic blood, which has got the pH value below 7. Anything above, above 7, before, below 8 is the proper alkaline food, alkaline water, alkaline blood. That is essential for the proper functioning of all organs. The cell health also will be maintained properly. You will have the perfect physical health, my dear friends. So, this is essential. Please try to do this. Of course, our chlorine, chlorine and water will go through the UV filter. The order will be removed, chlorine will be removed, and then you will get a water. Of course, the water which comes out will also have minerals. For our, uh, for our disadvantage, the all the places, tap water, the river water is not supplied. Because many of the places are not covered with this water network in the cities. In major cities like Bangalore, where we live, few areas will get cavity water, the river water, my dear friends. There only UV filter is more than enough. It's more than sufficient. But what will happen? Many of the places we live in Bangalore, we have to we have to drink the water through the well, to, through the you know uh, bro, uh, the bore wells basically. Bore wells we need to drink. That's the only the source of water now. The bore well water, my dear friends, you take the water from the down from thousand feet, thousand and five hundred feet, two thousand feet. You can expect so many different kind of minerals. The the high number of minerals are available inside that which are unnecessary, unnecessary minerals also available in that. That creates hardness of the water. Even fluorine will come. If you dig more, if you dig, uh, dig into the deeper of the earth, what happens? You get fluorine out of it. The fluorine, the fluorine is the mineral which is not required for your nourishment of body. So what will happen now? The hardness of the water is too much. It's ranging up to 600,000. Hardness, but your hardness of the water must be limited to 150 to 200 by difference. Then, for that, what you need to do, you need to use the sharpener. Before going to the sharpener, probably you can use RO, reverse osmosis filter. What it does, so it makes the water to pass through that RO, reverse osmosis, it removes all the minerals. UV filter will not remove the minerals, my dear friends. UV filter will Take away order, the smell, and chemicals. These two things it does. And also, it kills the bacteria, virus. Then what happened after UV? We are passing through the RO. What, what purpose? We have huge number of minerals existing in the water. That is hard water. Then your water becomes zero mineral water. That's called dead water. Many people say, RO water I'm drinking, RO water I'm drinking. Your RO water is a dead water. Directly, I can say that. There are no minerals in it. Of course, there are no bacteria, there are no virus, there are no smell, there are no chemicals. But RO water doesn't have any minerals out of it. Your minerals became zero. Now, this RO water you are drinking in, in the cities, everybody is drinking this. Then what is the alternative for this, my dear friends? You need to find some natural filters. Again, to re reintroduce these elements, the minimum required minimum minerals for our body magnesium, phosphorus, calcium, zinc. These are the basic minerals required to our body for the proper functioning of our body, all the organs. So, there are, of course, so uh, for the fortunate thing, the one fortunate thing happened is so, one, is, one uh, great uh, natural farming, natural farmer is there, the natural farmhouse, uh, Mr. Prakrutivanam Prasa in Madanapalli, he has invented by his own methods. One natural filter. What is the natural filter? Friends, why we call spring water is a mineral, real mineral water. 
your bottled water of kindly bisley is not a mineral water understand it's a dead water okay the first point you put down second point is your spring water is a real mineral water what it is actually the spring water that comes from well it has got all the minerals my dear friends how the how the water will acquire the minerals you know one thing to our surprise or to our the new thing which we may uh, learn today the rain water is having no minerals at all it's a pure basic raw water it's called raw water the rain water i'm telling you the rain water the moment it comes and fall on the buildings on the earth in the forest wherever it is it comes on touch the earth what will happen then only the minerals are added to that water then it becomes a mineral water okay so that means any water like why ganga water is so sacred try to understand the ganga gang the ganges river the water comes from the forest the dense forest where are there where in himalayas what happened there are many many medical plants available many many herbal herbal plants are there the water comes through the all the herbal plants all the mineral all the the great amount of medical elements minerals are get added to the water it comes to the river then you take a bath you drink the water of course nowadays that is also damaged that's our you know madness of the human being now we are damaged that also my dear friends we have gone to the extent of ravage extent of destruction the man is causing is so enormous the nature is destroyed that's why we there is a sir explained very clearly about law of karma we are giving we are destroying it we are getting back the destruction in the form of calamities floods what not the nature is resorting to that kind of the negative results my dear friends so try to understand now i try to explain you the kind of water quality of water what you need to drink on the daily basis friends so with this uh, what i try to say is so keep your so that's what i came to the last point the natural filter which is designed by him prakriti vanam prasad you can type in the google it's about 12000 13000 rupees so what it does is he has designed such a way that i try to explain you this spring water uh, how the rain water pure rain water becomes a mineral water Uh, and the spring water is a mineral water how it has become is by adding all the minerals naturally on its own flow of water the same way he has done it one the natural filter is designed he has kept the five layers in the five layers what he does is he filled with like you know sand and uh, mud and then lime and then the the kind of a other particles like you know which added like lime also all inclusive there are five courses of materials the uh, using brick powder brick powder also one of that brick powder sand mud and then lime comes to all these five elements he has provided the water which is poured on the top it goes through the, all the this uh, natural materials it gets into down by the time it gets down it added all these minerals then the out output of the natural filter is your actual mineral water this is the way you can drink in the cities there is no alternative made friends i never find any alternative friends one more thing is all our ancient rishis and munis they used to carry one copper vessel they used to have a kamandala they put water inside that they used to drink it of course it is correct but now it's not correct it is not applicable now what happened is those days a water is available with the all minerals they used to put in that inside that what happens again i'll tell you the advantage of copper vessel and the kamandala the reason is once the water kept in, inside the uh, the not the mineral water i'm telling you if you have mineral water ready your spring water whatever you have spring water for example if you keep inside the copper vessel the copper vessel has got a quality it kills all the bacteria and virus it attracts all the floating elements it has got the characteristics it becomes a the proper drinkable water once you do, once you put the water throughout the night you put whatever the if you have copper big vessel put the water if you have a proper mineral water let's say ra, the river water kaveri water you are getting into your house then put that water 5 liter 6 liter into the the vessel of uh, that much size then throughout the night you keep it the next day morning you drink it is a pure water without bacteria without virus you don't need uv filter at all this is the other way of understanding it 
but of course that facility that kind of environment is nowhere existing in all the major cities also that's most unfortunate nobody is taken care government governments also doesn't take care about it friends this is another way of drinking water right so the copper has got highest quality of that the what copper has got other quality is you try to generate negative ions in your water your water becomes structured water so that's the most drinkable water my dear friends so this is the these are some of the ways how you can keep up how you can uh, really drink the proper quality of water my dear friends so let's uh, let's close this uh, the concept and the 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 uh, is the details about the water now let's go to the one mudra i will try to explain so sir we always cover one one mudra in each class every day class one mudra we, we try to cover so let's have some i try to give a uh, uh, brief about uh, how mudra therapy has developed our ancient rishis and great vijnanis they have written this mudra therapy it's actually the uh, reminiscences are the mentioning about this mudra therapy and it has been found in scriptures like any other thing ayurveda the, the ayurveda you take this found in atharva atharva veda we have four vedas in atharva veda ayurveda is directly given sub part of the ayurveda atharva veda is ayurveda my dear friends similarly this mudra therapy mudra vigyan is also found in one thing called shiva samhita then grahan samhita then hatha atha yoga pradipika atha yoga pradipika these are the three ancient text which described this mudra therapy in a more profound way so how how mudra therapy works friends in the last classes i explained you mudra therapy works on on the basis of five elements of nature in our bo- the body is built with five elements panchabhutas the same way the entire entire earth entire globe it is built with five elements every body every physical body is consisting of this five elements any imbalance in this five elements cause the disease vata pitta kapha that is the reason for source for your disease my dear friends that means any imbalance what are the five elements this is first thing is fire this is air friends try to observe here this is a fire the air space elements this is a prithvi element the earth this is a water there is jala okay jala tatva prithvi tatva akash tatva and then comes to the the middle finger which is vayu tatva this comes to the agni tatva a this is a fire okay so out of this variation of any imbalance of out of these five elements cause a particular type of disease all let's say in modern days they call up, call it as about 300 diseases are there the names may be anything my dear friends but the uh, disproportion of these elements the imbalance of these elements create one particular type of disease in your body it can be arthritis it can be a kidney problem liver problem or a digestive pro- digestive problem gas acidity or the mental problems you know the kind of a disorders all these mental disorders everything happens due to the imbalance of these elements only now how do you correct this yes the mudra therapy is here it does help does great help by balancing out these elements and bring back the restoration of the proper health happens in everybody okay so let's understand now today as a part of this mudra therapy i have ex- i have keep explaining all the different mudras in every day class try to follow try to follow them try to implement in your life to restore health in a holistic manner so friends let us understand today one thing one one mudra we study about it we analyze it that is prithvi mudra what is prithvi mudra prithvi means i explained you it is a earth element see here this is the ring finger the ring finger is prithvi right this is a fire element what i am going to do is the prithvi mudra is practiced with the help of your ring finger okay the ring finger that is prithvi indicates prithvi element we are going to practice with it so actually prithvi indicates prithvi element prithvi element is going to construct all your body bones tissues your organs everything is built with the help of prithvi element which is predominant my dear friends the prithvi indicates for cooling nature the as you observe mother nature is so patient it means it bring a, it, it cools down your body my dear friends if you join the prithvi element with the fire element 
let me practice let me show the practice of formation of the mudra now one thing is this is a, the ring finger touch the tip of the thumb tap the just gently you touch the tip of the your ring finger like this all the other three fingers to be outward in straight forward keep straight all the other three fingers when you are keeping this mudra all other three ring, uh, three fingers must be straight outward see this so that means you are touching the tip of thumb tip of the ring finger gently touch no pressure my dear friends no pressure at all gently touch now what will happen is now agni tatva and prutvi so they are connected now gently touching so now what will happen is your prutvi your prutvi element is going to cool down the your agni element so that means what is the meaning of it friends i already told you this mudra must be practiced with both the hands always whenever you practice it must be practiced with both the hands and i told you to practice this mudra for a normal health preventing is better than cure it means for a general health for a in order to have a holistic health this can be practiced every time 15 minutes one in one go you can practice for 15 minutes any number of times you can do any time you can do anywhere you can do wherever you sit you can do the most the efficiency of mudra will be there when you close your eyes and do it the kind of when you are doing meditation you can practice this also yes what is the purpose of this mudra what are the benefits of this mudra i will explain you friends as i told you your prut your prutvi element your earth element is going to quench the agni within you that means anybody is having excessive heat generated inside the body this will take care any excessive fire within your body wherever whatever the organ it is in your digestive system also if somebody is feeling lot of heat or bodily lot of over heat is coming this is going to take care because the prutvi element is going to quench the fire in a proper way your over excessive heat can be obviously controlled it can bring into the balanced state my dear friends now let us discuss some more benefits of this particular prithvi mudra friends the one of the unique benefit is there i will explain you today the highly useful benefit for the nowadays modern life anybody is getting a gray hair gray hair that means white hair the hair becomes white right due to the nutrient due to the pollution existing today and due to the lack of nutrients and due to the heavy stress with all these factors what happens is many of the people now even at the engage their air, their hair becomes white gray it gets into the gray they lose their black blackish color gets into the gray color my dear friends okay there are many reasons for it so the reasons are separate we can explore later so fine so how do you control this any hair get into the gray color within last few days or a few months what will happen is we can bring back into the back black color by practicing of this mudra that is the recent the color change happened in your hair that can be bring back with the consistent practice of this mudra my dear friends i can tell you few days only it will take if it is color change happened recently if at all the gray hair has come for long time before what will happen is you have to keep practicing this mudra life long of course it will bring the change but anybody that's why i'm telling you the hair loss and premature gray graying of the hair these two things will be controlled with the help of this mudra so a hair can be treated with the practice of this mudra friends gray hair which is recent one turns black within 7 days by practicing this mudra daily for 50 minutes try to understand how much time you have to practice for getting this benefit you we must practice this mudra this is a therapeutic i'm trying to explain therapeutic actually there is a sustain this is one of the sustaining mudra of course to keep your excessive heat under control to keep your general health properly that all will happen with this mudra but i am giving you therapeutic way what is therapeutic mudra i am mean, i'm trying to explain through prutvi mudra is to uh, to avoid the hair loss to avoid the premature gray graying of your hair okay now how much time you have to practice one must practice in order to achieve this benefit you must practice 50 minutes in one go like this 50 minutes one go by doing this keep on your eyes close your eyes and keep this for 50 minutes my dear friends all three other fingers must be straight forward outward okay right so 50 minutes of this mudra must be practiced in one go 
followed by pranamudra pranamudra for 15 minutes i explained in the previous class also every mudra must be practiced followed by pranamudra in order to be therapeutic otherwise it becomes a sustaining mudra only for developmental purpose so now this pranamudra must be practiced for 15 minutes followed by this mudra what is the pranamudra see here so your prithvi element and your water element must be gently touched with your fire element thumb so other two fingers will be outward outward extend outward this is this is called prana mudra this always increases the prana shakti which is within you within your system that's why it is called prana mudra my dear friends okay so let, let's go into some more benefits your burning sensation in eyes stomach urine anus and hands and all the feet is quietly reduced is pacified because of this mudra any burning sensations anywhere you find in your body which will be pacified immediately if you start practicing this mudra it cures skin rashes and the kind of skin allergy which will be cured my dear friends try to understand this and also the kind of jaundice jaundice whenever you get a jaundice it is controlled and fever especially fever and inflammation any inflammation and fever fever will be caused due to inflammation in the within your body you know that that's that's called excessive heat why what we call it as excessive heat for that the so called modern medical system will put again some chemicals in it into the body which will further weaken your immunity my friends never do that practice these mudras follow the holistic lifestyle go with the ayurveda ayurvedic medicines the plant based herbal medicine which will cure any kind of illness from your body you don't need to depend on any kind of modern chemical oriented medicine please come out of that if you are doing it for any reason please come out of that every day class we share the holistic lifestyle lifestyle food style lifestyle everything we are explaining and also we are also giving this mudra therapy we also have herbal medicines my dear friends which will work wonders and in even in the mudras i am telling you there are something called immediate relief mudras that means instant cure mudras are there only two mudras we must understand we must really practice in our daily life i can give these two mudras also in the later point of time those two mudras are very very essential like a icu intensive care unit it works like that my dear friends there is one mudra which i explain you you will wonder apana vayu mudra that is murata sanjivani mudra the name itself indicate my dear friends it works wonders it brings you out of heart attack you know this you practice it i can challenge this i can challenge any medical system with this i am telling you that is apana vayu mudra this is heart mudra it's also called heart mudra see here see your thumb thumb base must be touched with your ring finger then other two fingers that is middle finger and the the other finger which is ring finger and the middle finger both must be gently touched with the thumb tip of the thumb you see the formation of this this is a heart exactly you see the heart heart is formed here if you do this mudra mudra within 8 seconds many of the times any heart congestion any heart pain chest pain you feel like symptoms of heart heart attack what whatever it may be put this mudra within 10 seconds it reverses it shows you the symptoms of great relief you will come out of it you don't need to go to the doctor also i am telling you you observe it yourself start observing for your little chest pain little chest congestion whenever it happens you get kind of a you know the anxiety you no know, kind of a stress you feel is feel in the mind and heart you feel please practice this you will understand yourself i practiced a lot i did this practice of this mudra i tested on myself in several occasions it works it worked wonder right this is one of the mudra there is one more mudra shunya vayu mudra friends it works wonder for vertigo the vertigo will be immediately removed by practicing shunya vayu mudra these are the two mudras which are which are going to work on the instant basis anyway so let's go so let's let's finish this uh, prati mudra my dear friends so this mudra will be the uh, will be very useful for in the in the case of fever and inflammations and also this mudra provides all a b c d e k vitamins my dear friends it generates it synthesizes all the these kind of uh, vitamins into your body itself okay so and also makes the mind as so generous it makes your mind 
more so generous my dear friends so these are the few benefits of prithvi mudra so friends we are so closing this uh, uh, prithvi mudra also now uh, we understood we discussed we analyzed okay so friends we will have some question i so who are asking any questions out of the today's topics of uh, holy lifestyle related to water and mudra also if you have any questions we can have some questions and then we will come to the end of sessions today yes friends any questions we can have so little number of uh, small number of questions we can take and then we will be ending the session so already we are 8:20 Sir, sorry for your uh, sorry for your time. We have uh, taken away your uh, valuable time. Now it's eight. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much. You know uh, for the wisdom sharing, sir. Yes. Sir. It's it's wonderful to listen the water therapy thing and the uh, mudra concept of it. Yes. So all the knowledge. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank yes. you very much. So, friends, uh, any questions? Please pose pose the questions. We'll try to clarify and then we'll move on. will be ending the sessions the wonderful spiritual wisdom shared by anil sir and we also discussed water therapy and mudra therapy prithvi mudra hello sir yes ma'am uh, this is uh, salaja yeah. uh, from us uh, yeah. i want to know um, a little bit of uh, this uh, heart uh, mudra what yeah. you have showed us now yes one yes. more time Yeah. and a very good informative session on the water therapy uh, which you uh, which you have very vast knowledge and very good uh, wisdom sharing i don't know this much of uh, water plays an important vital role in our life yes It's really really uh, we are blessed to listen this session yes Yes. yes actually what we'll what we'll do is we launch this program name itself is holistic wellness program i try yeah. to give importance from mother foundation we try to give, give the importance for holistic holistic wellness many of the times even we spend lot of time in spirituality and gaining spiritual wisdom practicing meditation we don't take care of the body you know yes what we say shariram idam kalu dharma sadhana yes you, that's right all your sadhana your physical body is the instrument which you need to keep healthy and holistic manner through holistic manner you must keep your health properly what will happen is many of the times i used to teach in the classes many people they use their spiritual energy cosmic energy what they receive only for curing the all the time to cure only physical diseases is it really a spiritual progress will happen in him within him within her it never happens what will happen is the lot of blockages karmic karmic blockages all the past karmas all the current lifestyle and the current current deeds what we do current karmas what we do all the negative karmas all those creates a huge number of blocks within your etheric body which results into the manifestation of all the physical diseases that everybody every one of us as a spiritual practitioner we all know that the yeah, it creates is, blockages we keep, we keep practicing meditation get huge amount of cosmic energy into our system and you are always clearing your pranic pranamaya kosha your etheric body and you are coming out of the disease of course that is why sir says patri sir says meditation is medicine no other medicine no other doctor says of course for emergency medical conditions you need the support of the modern systems but all the time most of the times you can cure yourself with the meditation with your own conscious practice of meditation get your energy body get cleans all your diseases will vanish but is that only thing you are going to do in your meditation through your sadhana is it the aim of spiritual spirituality no way the aim of spirituality is to get self realized so can self realization to get the enlightenment to get yes. moksha mukti liberation that is why in mata foundation through mata foundation through very holistic wellness program we give the importance for physical body mind our course our soul consciousness that is why we call this program as holistic wellness program yes madam yes i want to know that uh, heart yeah. mudra one yes. more time apana vayu mudra this is called yeah. mrutha sanjeevani mudra yeah so we call as a hrudaya 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 mudra okay yes so yeah so i will show you 
yeah. see here, your thumb your your thumb finger is actually yeah. this indicates fire element this indicates fire yep. element. now you are gently touching the base of your thumb base of your thumb with the ring finger tip okay tip of the ring finger just you are touching gently okay right now your thumb tip is going to touch middle finger ring finger tip gently close it like that gently close yeah yeah got it okay now your the little finger must be extending outwards right okay this is the mudra so this must okay. be practiced with the both hands so oh, both hands okay yes. always the any mudra to have effective results you must practice with both the hands what is the good time to do the mudra session any any time any, any time like like meditation or anapanasati meditation so we can okay. practice this mudra any time anywhere any place no okay. conditions no restrictions okay thank you sir yes bro why friends any more questions Uh, any mudra for acidity or digestion related uh... definitely definitely we have this uh, acidity the fire element the fire element to quench and to keep it balanced this putri mudra putri mudra what i explain it helps a lot okay please practice this putri mudra oh, okay thank you yeah for every disease there is a mudra for the general sustenance of health there are mudras which are six in numbers okay those six mudras are sustain they are called sustenance mudras prevention is better than cure any person who is healthy you can also practice those six mudras almost like 10 minutes for every mudra in a day 10 minutes one mudra 10 minutes one mudra you practice like that so those mudras are called developmental mudras they are sustenance mudras all other mudras which i am explaining you the other than this uh, six mudras they are called therapeutic mudras what are those six mudras i have explained you is a prithvi mudra varuna mudra akash mudra vayu mudra then comes shunya mudra so these are the six mudras my dear friends then we will be explaining those things in the further classes good morning sir good morning good morning my dear young friend yes sir Today's session very good. Explain by the master Anil sir. Yes. Uh, bene benefits of uh, meditation, and uh, you told of water therapy. Yeah. And every morning I am bringing two glasses of water after brushing my teeth, sir. Okay. Right, right. Yes, sir. Today class is very nice. Very good, very good. He is about uh, I think six or seven years, sir. Actually, seven years old. He follow this session. Daily from the first session also after the session I think he came along with his mother Pushpa. Then they came to our center. Our center, our meditation center is located in Whitefield, Bangalore. So it's called Mahathar Pyramid Center. So conducted by organized by Mahathar Foundation. Mahathar Foundation lot of it conducts lot of other workshops also sir. We conduct mm -hmm. actual farming workshop, Ayurvedic workshop, holistic wellness workshop, and we conduct. Uh, Mahathar Pyramid Center purely into the conscious, uh, conscious, consciousness improvement through the meditation and spiritual workshops, and we are going to conduct one big rally on uh, August fifteenth on the occasion of Freedom Day, Freedom, uh, you know, like uh, our uh, Independence Day. We are going to conduct a big rally, which is on the Mahakaruna Yagna. We are conducting Mahakaruna. Oh. We are doing on fifth uh, August. Yes, so which is going to, uh, which is going to consist of like. Mega Sashar Rally, then spiritual workshops, then the Dhyana Sangeeta, then the the kind of spiritual songs, and then cultural activities. All this full day workshop, full day program I am doing, sir. Very nice, very nice. So the Mother Foundation is organizing this event. Organizing that, okay. Excellent, excellent work you are doing, Master. Thank you, yes. thank you, thanks for sharing with me. In Whitefield, Bangalore. So our center right. is also located nearby in the Whitefield only, sir. Yes. Sir. Yes. Yes. Any more questions, friends? Right. Any more questions, Master? Any link or anything you can share on this event that you are talking Definitely. about? 
definitely even uh, anybody want to donate for this uh, this uh, right. this uh, the event the great event you can always do that your support is very much needed everybody support is a volunteer support no more it's not mandatory same volunteer support we expect foundation that that definitely a job no doubt but with the support of the volunteer support of all of us we can inspire to do much more uh, workshops like this physical workshops every saturday every saturday we do a spiritual workshop today also of course in the evening 5 to 7 our workshop will be there in our center physical workshop i take all the uh, workshops and i sometimes master from outside also they come and do the workshops every saturday and the center is open right from 10 o'clock to evening 7 o'clock anybody can walk in they can practice meditation in our center we have about eight pyramids pyramid chambers are there a big library is there huge spiritual library and also we have a big training center inside that it spread over about 3500 square feet in bangalore white city yes yes except yes great work great work you guys yeah. are doing awesome work sir on the ground thank you thank thanks you. for sharing yes friends if uh, no more questions we'll be ending the session yep Yes. Thank you. Thank you, masters. Thanks again for the wonderful opportunity. Thank you, master. Thank, Thank you. you. Uh, and truly, truly, uh, great session today. Uh, we are all learning. You know, each of us are learning from each other. That's the way we keep the spirits on. <laughs> yes. To the Patriji's movement. Thank you. Thank you much. Thank, Thank you. you. So. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you, masters. Thank. Thanks, one and two. Namaste to all. So, thanks for this wonderful opportunity for Mathar Foundation. Thanks to sincere thanks to all. patriji beloved guruji thank you one and all namaste we'll be signing off today thank you thank you thank you sir thank you thank you very much